another blast of eye-opening message. Join in as we explore together. Welcome to Apostolic Sermons TV. On this channel, you're going to be getting soul lifting messages, prayers that will help you grow and mature spiritually. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the video you're about to watch, and comment also. Thank you and stay blessed. Our esteemed viewers, the message you're about to listen to is designed to revive spiritual dryness and to restore hope and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. They paid a price that are pedestrian women on the heart of God. The guys came, looked at the sepulchre, did an examination and went to their own home. The woman that came to give them the information that the body was not there, that means she saw the situation before she went and told them and then they came to inspect and then they left and that woman still remained. And she was weeping. It's not as if she could do anything about the situation. But you could see the depth of loyalty that this woman had. And whenever we teach the sisters and we teach about the story of Jesus and the place of sisters, they are the loving ones. But today, how much love is in your heart for Jesus? The sisters were the loving ones. They loved him deeply. How much do sisters love God today? Well, that's for another day. Give me my scripture. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And she wept and, and, and stood down and looked into the sepulchre. And see it, two angels. The thing that she now saw at this point, the people that came for inspection did not see. When she she wept and when she looked, her weeping had to stop because she saw the image of two entities. Two angels were inside that place. They concealed their presence to the other guys that came for inspection. Don't worry. Which month will we dedicate for revival? We'll dedicate one month for revival too. To teach about revival and celebrate it. That is the month that people's eyes will be open. We'll be teaching like this. Just like she looked into the sepulchre and then she discerned. Your eyes will be open. In the name of Jesus. See her two angels in white sitting. The one at the head and the other one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. Next verse. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Next verse says, And, and, and when she had not said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. And this is the woman so heavily burdened about the fact that they have taken away her master. It did not occur to her that, she, that he rose. So that was not in the picture. Her heart was seen to that understanding. And so even though she saw the angels, she knew that they were not normal kind of creatures. But it didn't yet occur to her that Jesus was risen. And the woman said, why are you weeping? The angels told the woman, why are you weeping? Because the situation on ground here calls for rejoicing. This is hardly, hardly the emotion that is expected at this time. But she was still totally devoid of understanding. And then she decided, she felt as if there was life behind her. You know that feeling you have, alright? And she turned to look and she saw Jesus. But you know what? Jesus had manifested in the form <coughs> that she could not recognize. He hid himself from her. Even from loving ones, this, this monarch, he will hide himself. He wanted to see the depth of her love for him. So he came and manifested as if he was a passerby. She could not discern that it was Jesus. Do you realize that at that time Jesus did not want to reveal himself to her? So even though she was crying, she was doing the right thing. She was looking for Jesus. She was shaking. She was weeping. She was doing all the things we normally do when we want to seek the face of God. But you see, except God wants to reveal himself to you, 
your attempts cannot be good enough to deserve a response. He was standing there, but her ability to discern him was taken away from her. And she wept. In fact, she made a statement. I'd like you to see that statement. So the first thing I wrote in my script here is that a spiritual disclosure depends on his willingness. His willingness is not whether you are willing. It's about him willing. Do you remember that guy that was brought someone for prayer and he said, if you will, you can make this one well. If you will, you can show yourself. If you will, hallelujah. Now, so my question is this, in seeking the face of God, what are the things you can do to make him will? Because it's dependent on his own willingness. If not, he will manifest in a way that will hide him. He's there, but he will not give you the capacity to understand the things you need to understand. Like in our own case, he could not understand that he had risen. Her heart was close to it. It is only if he puts that understanding in her that she can understand it. And because that understanding was not there, her eyes were totally concealed. And when she saw Jesus, she even asked Jesus, are you the one that took him? It is possible for you to accuse the one that came to bring you salvation. Just because the eyes of your understanding are not enlightened. Do you realize now why Paul says, the, the, I pray for you. <laughs> why am I praying for you? That day. So the next time you have a mighty prophetic disclosure, it's not because you are a great man of God. It's just because he had mercy and decided to what? To enlighten. So after every time you move in the power of God, after every time you move in the prophetic grace, every, every time you move in a stream that blesses people, you go back to your closet and say, Hey! You agreed today. You were willing today. Thank him for his being, for his being willing. Because if it was not willing, nothing will happen. So first of all, in seeking God, you must understand that your entering into that economy of God's disclosure is dependent on His willingness to unveil Himself. So it means, therefore, that none of us knows how to know God. And that's why the prescription for everyone that wants to stumble on God is wait upon the Lord. That's the best you can do. And then it is when he becomes willing that he does what? That he shows himself. If people give you a name in ministry, don't accept it. If they call you the healer, don't accept it. If they call you, many of you, except they address you properly as the one with the ballistic missile, you will not come out of the vehicle. You will be waiting for the right name to invoke, to invoke the virtues. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> if they have not mentioned that name, you won't, like there, there, there was there was there was a man. They mentioned all his titles. The only one they forgot is JP. JP. <laughs> hey. They forgot to add what JP. He became the object of a great crisis. <laughs> he rebuked all the people that came. To- That's a man that has lost his context. Because the great monarch will only manifest himself if he is willing. Can you see go? Okay, you can't go again. Hallelujah. So let me introduce my real scripture. My real scripture is in the book of Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to 32. I hope I can do the long reading. Okay, in order for me to teach properly, who is a good reader here? Where's the other microphone? Where's the other microphone? Give this my sister from Calabar. Okay, you can help me out. Luke chapter 24 from verse 13. Now, read it like the word of God so that we can be breaking it as we are going on. And behold. And behold. Two of them went that same day. Two of them went that same day. To a village called Emmaus. To a village called Emmaus. Which was from Jerusalem. 
which was from Jerusalem. About three score four lungs. Three score four lungs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, mm. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. While they communed together, while they reasoned, Jesus did what? Do you realize that, are you here? When you seek God, when you are seeking Him, most of the time, it's not the time you are praying in tongues, He shows up. When you take a break to reason, then He enters into your thoughts. Yes. That's when God becomes like a river that flows. Then He flows into your thoughts. And then He begins to empower His thoughts. So that you begin to think His thoughts. He causes you to think outside of the box. It takes you away from your own context and he allows you to flow into his own mind. Then you begin to think his thoughts. Then he empowers his thoughts to be sustained upon your heart. It was why they reason. They were they were gisting, gossiping. They even lied. He didn't show up. But why they what? Reason. Many of you speak in tongues for four hours. You don't have time to reason. Bravo! Then. Share the grace. Amen. He has gone. He's out of sight. God. God. is out of the radar. But he doesn't know that it's while he begins to what? To reason. God begins to navigate. Into, you see, I, I know you are expecting an angel to come and stand on the right leg and say, Talita Kumi. <laughs> You will wait for a long time. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor. Help me preach your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me preach your neighbor. Say, don't look for the spectacular. Look for the supernatural. Now, this is how the supernatural is. The supernatural looks like natural. But it doesn't have a source in natural. Many times when I get a word of knowledge, I test it before I present it. I say, okay, was I thinking about this thing before it dropped? If I wasn't thinking about it and it just dropped, then I know it's a word of knowledge. Because it is natural, because it's a thought. But I wasn't thinking about it, so it didn't come from me. It was a super, what? So the Bible says, why they were reasoning? It was their own reasoning. And then he joined them. To take them beyond their reasoning. To take them beyond their own articulation. To take them beyond the things they have learned, the things they were taught, the things they knew, the things they observed, the things they experienced. He takes them beyond it into his own context. It was while they were what? Reason. I found that. This is my own personal. It's not a standard. It's an experience. I found out that if I prayed for long and I want to hear God, I leave the quiet place. I can't hear him in the quiet place. That's not you. That's me. I want to move to a noisy place. Those days in Lagos, there was a place called Orile. Orile. You will see all kinds of vehicles with passengers almost kidnapping you to enter their vehicle. When all those horns are blaring and I'm there, there will be enough distraction so that if he breaks through that distraction, I, I know he said, while they reasoned, he did what? He joined himself to them. Yes, go on, sister. But their eyes were holding. Sister Gibbs, when you finish praying, take some time to reason. If you don't operate that way, you are going to follow the counsel of men. I know the counsel of God. It's very easy for you to be manipulated. But if a man is going to be strong in the spirit, he, knows, he needs to know the manifestations of the God that hides himself. He doesn't come loud most of the time. When you see that Paul was saved on the way to Damascus, and it was a great light that came upon him, that's spectacular. God, spectacular is a rarity in God. The, the base, the platform of God's oppression is the supernatural. He does something that is not... That is within the context, but the way the thing came was not by man. It is supernatural, 
not necessarily spectacular. For those of you that have had spectacular experiences, you are not likely to have more than five spectacular experiences in your lifetime. Because I studied the Bible to see how many spectacular experiences Paul had. It was only one. So that's a rarity. And you cannot build your Christian life on a rarity. The, 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 the most terrible thing that happened to the church is that a group of young people rose up and they began to present the spectacular as the ideal. One came and brought a feather and said, while he was praying, this feather appeared. I knew that the sons of Belial, they have visited our generation again. A presentation of the spectacular as the norm. We should look to the spectacular. It was a journey beyond the regions that grace can support. Every time the spectacular took place, it was not by the fate of men. It was by the sovereignty of God. When you hear that Philip, Philip was taken from that place where he baptized the eunuch and was found in the regions of Azotus, it was not because he prayed in Chinese town. It was not because he prayed in capital letters in town. It was because of God's sovereignty. God sovereignly decided to take him from that baptismal site to the city of Azoth. It was not an act of faith. It was not an expectation. Are you with me? During night vigil, one day, a brother closed his eyes and began to pray. And I, I, he didn't know. He walked through the wall. He came out of the wall. He walked through the wall three times. It was the people that were praying with him that now told him, Oh God, <laughs> you walk through this wall. And then he became loud in the spirit, trying to walk through it. <laughs> they had to help him with rub. Here. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor it's not by power. <laughs> not by mind. It's not by mind. <laughs> it's not by mind. Don't look for the spectacular. Look for the supernatural. Help me preach. Help me preach. Don't look. Don't look for the spectacular. Some Christians, they were the ones that inherited the ministry of the missionaries that brought the gospel to their village. And during the labors of that man, the man built a small church, a lighthouse in the heart of the city. And it came to pass about 35 years later, the government wanted to make a road through that city. And the people, the surveyors with their theodolites, when they came through the environment, it was where the church was standing. They said the road has to pass. You see, you don't understand. The road is in the midst of a vast land. When they were manipulating the theodolite, like this, it was where the church was standing that they said, this is the original place where they wrote this. They went to the government, complained. The government said, no, that's how it's going to happen. And then these guys were praying in the night. And the Lord spoke. And the Lord said they should march to the place where the building was and don't look back. And they, and they marched there. And when they got there, they began to speak in tongues. And the Lord said, they should put their hands on the building and they should push it. As they were praying in tongues, they were pushing the building. The building began to move. So they took the building to the, all, the last end of the land. The, other, the next day, when the people came with their children light and their... <coughs> the building was at the other end of the field. Don't look for the spectacular. Look for the supernatural. The sons of Belial, they have gone out. One said that angels, angels switch on his generator for him. Angels lock his gate. He should be arrested and jailed <coughs> in the dungeon. Because he, that's what he thinks angels do. Well, Paul says concerning revelations, I will not I will not say. What I know about angels is not this night, I will say it. it, it, it Paul felt it was there was nothing to boast about revelations. 
But if you have had some encounters, you will know when men lie. When men that have never been there, when they talk, you will know. We are not boast. I don't need to do, do something to show you where I have been. No. Rank is not visible in the natural. It's not visible. It's not visible in the natural. Yes, sister. Go on. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Now this God that hides himself, he has joined himself to them. But what did he do? He ensured that there was a veil. So it means that God can restrain you from inside. There's a scripture that God can keep close for a thousand years. Don't you understand what men like Paul said? He said, these things, these things has God revealed to his holy apostles and prophets at this time. That means the revelation existed. But he concealed the hearts of all the prophets until the first generation of apostles came. And said, what was that mystery? Christ in you. The hope of glory. I pray that God will have mercy. And that God will open unto you the vistas of heaven. What makes a man mighty are the things that God allows him to encounter. Oh, may the Lord, may the Lord step out of his glory. And come to your bedroom and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. In the name of Jesus Christ.